sermon text for today is taken from the last chapter of the Old Testament, chapter 4 of the book of the prophet Malachi, reading there verses 1 and 2. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you, who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its rain. This is God's word. Surely the day is coming. Did you try that one out on anybody there? What might they think? Oh, you mean the opening of that camp uh, uh, outlet mall? Uh, maybe you're hoping that that favorite football team of yours is actually going to make it to the Super Bowl this year. Or maybe if you're a child, you're just thinking about Christmas. You know, in a pretty tree with the lights and the meat stuff underneath its bowels. Surely the day is coming was not what Malachi wasn't talking about those things. Oh, it, it wasn't that, that Malachi didn't like football. It's just that they didn't have football in his day. You know, when it came to champions, they weren't on a gridiron covered with astroturf or, or nice green grass in a stadium. Usually it was out on some blood-drenched battlefield where the champions were the only ones who survived. As far as Christmas goes, however, Malachi was looking forward to that. He heard the promises of Scripture in his own prophecy. He told them where the birthplace was in Bethlehem of Ephrathah. And though it would be more than 400 years before that birth would take place, he was looking forward to that day. But in our text for today, he's looking beyond the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, the birth of his Savior, the Savior of all. He's looking beyond even Easter and the Good Friday that preceded it when Christ was nailed to the cross and all of the sins of all people were laid on him. He was looking beyond the day of Jesus' resurrection, beyond, beyond ascension when Jesus returned to heaven, there to rule over all things for the benefit of his people. He was looking to the very last The day of judgment. When all the dead and the living will stand before God and hear that judgment. Either not guilty or those dreaded words to come from me. <laughs> Yeah, you read this prophecy, you know, and uh, you, you can come up with, with a description for it that's something like uh, what you see printed here in the book. The, the day of no second chance. You do realize that, don't you? There'll be no second chances on that day. Not a single one offered or given. There, you see, when it comes to, to that day, there'll be no rain checks offered for those who... who who, who want to go to heaven, but, you know, didn't give much thought to it before and didn't like the message anyway, and they weren't too keen on that Jesus guy. There, there'll, be, uh, there'll be no, no delayed start. No, they won't reschedule that for those who weren't prepared, you know, like, like a photo retake at school or something like that. No, none of that will happen. It'll be over in the twinkling of an eye. A flash of lightning. That is it. It's done. Not guilty or guilty. In heaven, going to hell. Forever. The day of no second chances. None will be offered. It's kind of terrifying. 
You know, you read those passages from Malachi, and, and the, the words are quite descriptive. You, just listen to them again. He says, that day is coming. It, it, they will set them on fire. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. Scorched earth. You're the living here. Everything on it. Burn. There's a message of law. The law is not meant to be gentle and soft. It's meant to crush. It's meant to take that rebellious spirit within us, that tendency to do that which goes against God's will, and drive it to the ground until there's nothing. It's sent to condemn. For those who know who God is and what he has done for them, it becomes a guidebook, a means by which we can show our gratitude for the one who has done everything for our salvation. For the unbeliever, for the arrogant, and the evildoer is described there. Those who, in their pride, look to themselves for all that they need. Rejecting a message of God's grace, which is utter foolishness or a stumbling block to them. They turn from the only hope of salvation, the only one through whom a sinner might be saved. And the result is guilty. Guilty of it all. Every sin, every sinful thought, every sinful word, every neglected deed that should have been done. Every hidden, hidden sin dredged up to be seen so that the just judgment is in the eyes of the condemned and everyone else. Hmm. You know, that's a message the world doesn't like to hear if you realize that. Okay. In fact, I, I've often been sad to read that a lot of, there are a lot of Christians that don't like it. They like heaven. That sounds good, you know. Uh, but boy, just a picture of fire. Now, we could argue that, you know, there's, 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 there's goodness in fire. You know, I mean, we cook our food on it. That's good, right? You know, out on the grill. On you know, a chilly night out there on the patio, you might have that fire pit and gather around. Roast some wine. That's good. But you've got to look at the whole truth. Fire's not only good, fire also burns down houses, incinerates homes. And everything in it. Leaves blackened hills and mountains for forest fires and rain. And so it is with God's word. The law condemns. So if you don't want to be one who buys into half the truth, as some will do, and just focus only on God is law, which is true. But we dare not forget that God is also just. Here's the frightening thing. God punishes every sin. So in the day of judgment, there will be no second chances. None will be given. Because you see, God did punish every sin already. We dare not forget that when Jesus was nailed to the cross, remember what he said? It is finished. God laid on him the iniquity, the sins of everyone, the crushing weight of God's sin, our sin and guilt. God piled upon his son. Jesus who cried, My God, my God, I have you forsaken me. He endured the punishment we deserve, the hell that we deserve. And he triumphed. Sacrifice was accepted by his father. So that you and I, turning from that arrogant, proud spirit and, and that, that rebelliousness that is ours from the moment of conception, <coughs> because we've heard this gospel message, might be a people that know on the day of no second chances, we won't need a second chance. Because we already have 
The goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls, the means by which you said before the service, you look forward to the last judgment because you know final victory and it's ours. So the Apostle Paul can say in that eighth chapter of Romans, which is so special to all of us, we are more than conquerors through him. We did all this for us. When I was a, a young man with a wife and a child, and we were living out in California in a small mission congregation near Bible study one Sunday and it was it during this time of the, of the church year and our pastor was conducting a Bible study on the end times and we were looking at Matthew chapter 24 and 25 you know, and all this and he really painted a picture for us of, of what it's going to be like on that day, the, the joy that will fill our heart, the joy of our salvation, you know, the church triumphant, you know. Uh, and then he had us look at those who qualify as the arrogant people do, the rejectors of God's grace. He says, what do you see on their faces? It's regret. Regret like none of us can imagine. Where the richest treasure of all was handed to them. And they pushed the price. And on that day, that regret begins. <coughs> Eternal separation from God. Regret for rejecting yeah. a gift they didn't deserve, a gift they could not buy, a gift they could not earn. But it was offered free of charge. It required nothing of them. Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus said. Oh, heaven forbid any of us should ever stand in that. And even though we know confidently that Jesus has done everything for our salvation, we also know there's something in this law message for us as well. You know, like neglect of the word. Inattentiveness in the matter of gathering regularly for worship, going to Bible class, bringing my children to Sunday school. Looking as opportunity provides it to turn to the Word and have my faith nurtured and strengthened and filled again and again and again with the hope and confidence I have that Jesus has done everything for my salvation and yours. There's something else, too, in this message this urgency. Urgency that we sometimes don't sense when we think about the last judgment. It, it's real easy because, you know, we still possess the sinful flesh of ours to think, yeah, then they're going to get theirs, I'll tell you. <laughs> Wrong attitude. Was that the kind of attitude that you saw in your Savior Jesus? Or in the apostles who went out into the world and endured all kinds of persecution? You heard a little bit about that in the Bible class today. To, 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 to simply give away this. No. The Bible tells us that God desires that none should perish, but that all should come and repent, which means to turn to Him for the gift. The gift of eternal life, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of the assurance of God's unfailing love for sinners. The gift of heaven, which lasts forever in the presence of God. Yeah, the day of no second chance. Surely the day is coming. But well, the temptation of my sinful flesh is to say, well, yeah, wait, it's been a long time since I've worked for it. It's been 24 hours years ago. What's taking so long? The apostle says, God is not slow. No. He's patient. Not wanting anyone to perish. He's patient. He wants, he wants his people. He wants those of us who know that we have been acquitted to take that message to others. 
You know, the people we call our loved ones and our friends, you don't know Jesus? Are they really your loved ones? And you share the gospel? Oh, I know he's in there. Oh, I've been there once. Oh, he never believed. Yet, yet. Don't you know him? Carrie, June, Joy. Hold on, I want you to get your joy. It's a You can think of their names and who they are. You can see their faces. You have the gift of eternal life in your heart to be shared a new that can save. Oh, there's no guarantee that it brings off that. Finally, they, their corrupted goodwill is such that they can reject that message offered them. And stand again in, the, in that group of people, the arrogant and the evildoers that Malachi talks about, and they will indeed suffer the fires of hell for eternity if they do not repent. But let us not focus on that, upon the urgency being ones to tell others that for those who revere the name of the Lord, there is happening. But how are they going to hear and believe that somebody that you're going to come? Dare we forget that faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ? Do we doubt the power of the gospel even though the Apostle Paul tells in the very first chapter of his letter to the Romans, I'm not ashamed of it because it is the power of God, the dynamite of God, the salvation of everyone who believes. You don't have to invent the message. You don't have to be eloquent. You don't have to be educated beyond this knowledge of your Savior Jesus. Just need to let your light shine before men that you might see what has happened in your life and come to praise you with honor and You know, when I was a kid, and the first time I heard in Sunday school that parable of, you know, Jesus tells about the wedding banquet table. You know the one, right? You know? And uh, so here I'm a kid, right? Six, seven years old, and I imagine myself sitting at that banquet table. Wow. You know, as a kid, you know, you think, man, this is better than eating loser potluck I've ever been at, you know. And, and it's just awesome. And then you look, imagine this, imagine looking across the table. And there, there's a person looking at me, and that person. What, what is he, what is what that person saying? Daily, the fact of the matter is with each little 
square in your calendar passing. You're one day closer to the day of Christ coming again to judge the living and the dead, which will surely occur. We don't know when. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe years from now. But one thing remains true. The day of no second chances. None will be given. None will be given. But thanks be to God for our Lord Jesus Christ. For us and all and for all who revere the name of the Lord. None will be needed.